Here's everything you might have missed in the new Eternals trailers. While What If has come to an end and Shang-Chi's looking for an insurance company willing to cover all 10 of his priceless rings, we're in one of those rare times of the year where we have to actually wait a couple of weeks until we're graced once again by a new entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The next film in Phase 4, Eternals, is shaping up to potentially be its most significant thus far, at least according to Marvel Studios head honcho Kevin Feige and director Chloe Zhao. On November 5th, Eternals will introduce the world to the weird, wonderful characters that climbed out of Jack Kirby's brain in the 1970s that apparently stood on the sidelines of the Marvel Cinematic Universe for, oh, I don't know, 7,000 years? And while the fact these godlike beings were chilling just out of frame during the Battle of New York and the fight against Thanos in Infinity War and Endgame has been memed to high heaven at this point, new trailers and interviews for the film suggest they're going to be dealing with cosmic forces far deadlier than like a CrossFit California race and wearing a bedazzled glove. We're gonna break down the new footage in these teaser trailers and discuss some recent interviews with the likes of Kevin Feige, Chloe Zhao, and producer Nate Moore to give you a better sense of what's coming your way this fall and why Eternals could be so important to the MCU. And this new footage gives us even more fodder for some of our theories that have been percolating ever since that first trailer dropped. Now, if you prefer to go into this completely unspoiled and unaware, make like Makari and run away as fast as you can. Alright, let's get into it, shall we? On Monday morning, Marvel released a pair of teasers titled Return and In the Beginning, and they are jam-packed with new footage that hints at major moments in the film, showdowns with iconic villains, and apocalyptic events. They also feature some auspicious statements about the impact that Eternals is going to have on the Marvel Cinematic Universe moving forward. So let's start with the return teaser. Around the 10 second mark, while Kit Harrington's Dane Whitman is asking Cersei about why the Eternals never intervened in any of the countless catastrophic events in human history, we see the bombed out ruins of a city. Now we saw a glimpse of a similarly devastated landscape before that featured Fasta's weeping in Ajax's arms, and chances are this could be the aftermath of the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima or Nagasaki. As we learned in his official character description, Fastos is an inventor, and he's helped nudge humanity forward technologically from the shadows. So maybe he helped mankind achieve nuclear power, and now he's filled with guilt and remorse about how it was perverted and weaponized. After that, we see a close-up shot of Thena surrounded by thin strands of gold light that cover her like armor, and Makari seemingly saluting some figure off screen. Maybe this is taking place in whatever chamber we saw in the previous trailer where the Eternals were assembled around a crystalline statue or like a projection of a celestial, like the Body Worlds version. And speaking of Eternals assembling, Icarus Riley riffs on the Avengers iconic catchphrase in a scene that's presumably about getting the gang back together. Now this could also be connected to the previous shot of Ajax using her ability to communicate across the cosmos with the Celestials because she does act as the primary liaison between them and the rest of the Eternals. Also have noticed the fact that as she uses her power, the blue columns of whatever Babylonian building she's in turns black and golden eternal symbols appear all over them. Next up, in newer shots, we see Don Lee's Gilgamesh in front of the Ishtar Gate in ancient Babylon, and he's about to lay an epic beat down on a deviant, who later in the trailer we see is about to attack the city. After that, Lauren Ridloff as the speedster Makari stands on a beach holding a golden bubble in her palm while oil rigs emit black smoke in the background. Now maybe this is an important message from another one of the Eternals given Makari's status as an advanced scout of this team, and later in the trailer we see Makari's super speed in action as she races to push Cersei out of the way of their ship, the Domo, which is about to crash into the ground. Whether someone hijacked it or Fastos hasn't quite cracked the code behind autonomous vehicles remains to be seen, but it definitely feels like a turning point. After that we see Thena attack Gilgamesh with her weapon as Kingo tries to defuse the situation. Now, it's unclear if Thena actually recognizes the rest of the Eternals at first, or if she simply isn't stoked to have her desert paradise filled with intruders from her past. If it's the former, this could be a manifestation of something confirmed by producer Nate Moore to members of the press that visited the Eternals set last year. According to Moore, Thena is afflicted by something known as Mod Wiry, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. It's basically a version of dementia that can afflict Eternals. Because of the amount of memories they have, they become unstuck in their own mind, so she starts to forget exactly who she is. This condition, which was also confirmed by the Eternals Monopoly game of all things, first affected Cersei during the events of Avengers 361, and that led to the Avengers and Icarus binding Dane Whitman, the Black Knight's soul, to hers in an effort to stop it. 
However, in the comics, the only way to cure Mod Wiry was to kill the eternal suffering from the condition and essentially reboot them from a backup of their consciousness, which is an interesting development. Where exactly do they keep these backups? That's unclear. Maybe it's gonna be on the Domo, their spaceship, or in that massive celestial chamber we saw Cersei exploring in previous trailers. So if Thena is in fact being affected by this condition, it could help explain how and why she gets overpowered and potentially corrupted by the Deviant Warlord Crow, as we saw in previous trailers. Moving on from there though, we see some shots of beastly Deviant creatures in a cave, followed by another shot of Thena fighting another large Deviant. This is in turn followed by Thena and Cersei standing in front of that erupting volcano from previous trailers, and they slice through the rubble and deflect the burning hot rocks raining down on them. This is most likely connected to the emergence, the inciting event that causes Ajax to reassemble the Eternals in the first place. As we explored in a recent theory video, the emergence refers to the return of the Celestials, presumably the birth of a new Celestial from a Celestial egg buried inside the planet, or the emergence of the Dreaming Celestial, both of which could be bad news bears for our heroes. For more on that though, make sure you check out the video, which I will link to in the description below. Later in the trailer, we see a nice shot of Fastos with his son, and although the posters on the wall are blurry, one of them definitely looks like Spider-Man, and based on his abiding interest in superpowers later in the trailer, most likely, he's a big fan. What's your superpower? Look, to be fair, who among us wouldn't use their powers to do all sorts of mundane nonsense all day every day if we had them? Except when it comes to the Eternals, it seems like not much is going to be mundane, at least as suggested by the In the Beginning featurette. After showing us the raising of the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan by the Spanish conquistadors, Kevin Feige arrives to tell us that the Eternals will explore the very creation of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and not just one that happened in a boardroom, one that happens in the cosmos. In terms of timeline though, producer Nate Moore confirms the film will deal with the aftermath of Avengers Endgame and the state the world is in. Clearly, the resultant energy of the Infinity Gauntlet snaps have had an effect on both the Deviants who are emerging again for the first time in centuries, and whatever Celestial is slumbering beneath the Earth's surface. In terms of new footage, we see a gnarly looking Deviant creature surrounded by monstrous wolf-like beings unleashing a beastly battle cry. We then get some fantastic close-up shots of the Eternals in their full costumes divided by Gemma Chan into two distinct categories, thinkers and fighters. The thinkers include Sprite, Droog, Ajax, Cersei, and Fastos. The fighters are Gilgamesh, Kingo, Icarus, Thena, and Makari. Now that isn't to say these characters don't contain multitudes, but it is a helpful metric for dividing them based on power sets. And speaking of powers, we see Cersei turn volcanic rubble into a flock of birds using her matter manipulation abilities, which we previously saw on display in scenes in London, when she turned a bus into a bunch of flowers. We also see Icarus using his eye blast to turn one deviant into multiple deviant chunks, and Sprite using her illusory powers to make Icarus, Dane, Cersei, and herself invisible on the streets of London. We also see Fastos forming high-tech gauntlets around his arms on that same volcanic beach, suggesting that A, they're gonna shoot energy blasts, and B, that volcanic island is gonna be the site of the film's climactic showdown. And this is really hammered home by another shot later in the trailer of Fastos, Thena, and Cersei standing amidst what appears to be the ruins of their ship or something else of eternal and or celestial construction in front of that volcano. And last but not least, we see behind the scene shots of Icarus tumbling on the beach, maybe the same one as that volcanic island, and Kingo using his fingos to unleash powerful blasts of energy at Droog's forest compound. Now the next shot is particularly silly. We see Icarus and Droog making some kind of trade. In exchange for an old looking book, Drew gives Icarus a box of Twinkies, something that's probably pretty hard to come by when you're a cult leader living in the middle of nowhere. Now, based on all these stacks of books and junk in the background, this exchange is taking place on their ship. I mean, look, I know it's messy, but you try living for 7,000 years and not becoming a massive hoarder. After that, we get a really lovely shot of all the Eternals, save for Icarus and Cersei, looking on lovingly at something just off screen. Now what they're looking at is most likely love itself, the wedding of Icarus and Cersei taking place thousands of years ago in the past. Now based on this one shot and one we see later in the trailer of the Eternals riding on horseback past massive temples, this event is taking place somewhere in ancient South or Southeast Asia. According to the Eternals Monopoly board, guess who's back? This might be the ancient city of Pataliputra, the predecessor of modern day Patna in India. Pataliputra was one of the greatest cities in the world that seemingly vanished over time as the result of fires, flooding, and political strife. And speaking of strife, it looks like Gilgamesh is gonna need some sturdier armor because in one of the behind the scenes shots, you can see this powerful Eternal with what appears to be arrows or arrow markers sticking out of his chest preparing for a forested fight scene. 
Although, with that said, something tells me you're gonna need more than just three arrows to take down this towering beef castle because, let's face it, he isn't a member of the Temporaries. Moving on, while we know that Icarus, Cersei, and Dane Whitman will find themselves in a love triangle, we also get a brief shot of what appears to be Makari and Droog sharing a tender embrace on the beach. We also see Gilgamesh holding hands with Thena, so clearly love is in the air for these immortal beings. Although, if it's anything like the comics, Thena's gonna break Gilgamesh's heart when she gets together with the deviant warlord Crow instead, so... Hey man, better luck next time. After a few more behind the scenes shots, we get another one of the cast all goofing around in a mysterious chamber that looks an awful lot like Jack Kirby's artwork for the City of the Space Gods in Eternals number one. In particular, the carving on the wall over Icarus's shoulder might be hinting at ancient celestial iconography because it looks straight out of the comics. Next up, we see Makari's sonic boom blast a deviant back and Kingo tells her it was a nice move in sign language. Based on subsequent behind the scenes shots and one of Gilgamesh, it appears this scene could be taking place in ancient Mesopotamia as one of the Eternals first outings protecting mankind from the deviants. We also get an awesome behind the scenes look at one of Kingo's Bollywood dance sequences because as you may know, he's become a bona fide movie star in modern times, which eventually might come back to bite him, but hey, that's, that's future Kingo's problem. Current Kingo, he's got a jet. Moving on, we get a very quick shot of what appears to be Cersei opening a door at Druk's compound, and it's seemingly locked with Eternals technology, so something important has to be behind that. Maybe, say, the rest of his Twinkie collection? Only time will tell. What we don't need more time telling is just how hard Icarus punches another flying deviant, because the answer is so hard he puts a damn hole through it! Now, as the trailer ends, we get an action-packed montage, including Thena leaping with her spear and maybe a sword as well, another shot of the Unimind forming, and even more of Icarus's handy-dandy laser eyes. Once again, Kevin Feige reiterates that the impact that Eternals will have on the MCU will be nothing less than redefining the cinematic universe entirely. Now, considering it's going to be dealing with cosmic origins of the planet and the universe as we know it, I don't doubt that. But the real question is, will the prevailing theory about this film introducing mutants to the MCU come to pass as well? Speaking with Fandango, director Chloe Zhao echoed Feige's statement by saying, I think by the end of the film, we will have a new understanding of planet Earth's relationship with the cosmos and also with her own inhabitants. But in that sense, it would have a huge effect on the future of the MCU. Honestly, maybe we will get the groundwork for something like mutants based on their connection to the Eternals comics. But with that said, I think introducing a whole group of cosmic space gods and their immortal avatars on Earth, that might have to suffice for the time being. And I know that's rich coming from me. Of course, if you do want to dive deeper into how the Eternals could introduce the X-Men into the MCU, well, we have videos and articles just for you. And if you want to dive deeper into the mythological origins of the Eternals, we have an article about that and so much more waiting for you over on Nerdist.com. In the meantime, though, we'll be keeping our eyes peeled for more Eternals goodness and waiting with bated breath to see this film at long last when it comes out on November 5th, 2021. Anyway, folks, there you have it. Tell us, what did you think of this new footage? Do you spot anything that we missed? And what would you trade for a box of Twinkies? Let me know in the comments below. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.